The day my project almost collapsed. What I learned could save your project. You mind if I tell you a story? You see, I was leading this project and during uh, the, uh, I should say, the construct of building out this particular project, we had a kickoff meeting. And a kickoff meeting is really to inform everyone around you, meaning your stakeholders that, hey, we're about to set this thing on fire. Okay, you don't like that. Well, we're about to move forward in this project that has been greenlit to move forward. So I got, I was super excited and this was my very first project. I'll never forget that day. It was my very first project. I just transitioned from sort of like a BA slash project coordinator to a full-time, or I should say the title of project manager. And I get everyone on the call and we're getting ready to get, you know, get started. And I am going through my agenda because, you know, I watched other project managers or project managers do this and it seemed like they had a flow. They had an agenda and they went through each bullet point, asked questions. Voila, that was it. Well, I actually did that and it wasn't any voila. What it was was, ooh, what about this? What about that? How are we going to do this? What? Do we, and it was a flurry of questions. Hey, if you're new to the to the channel, I go by the name of ED. For all you smart and intelligent folks out there, that just simply means Ed. Today's episode is entitled Strategies Top Project Managers Won't Tell You, But I Will. Essential Strategies for Project Kickoff Meetings. Again, Strategies Top Project Managers Won't Tell You, But I Will. Essential Strategies for Project Kickoff Meetings. I got a quote here from Andy Stanley. He says, leaders who don't listen will eventually be surrounded by people who have nothing to say. Mm, that's heavy right there. Uh, as you know, I have an eight point framework. One of these, these eight points, I just basically unpacked today's uh, title. If you don't know by now, again, I go by the name of ED for you smart and intelligent folks out there. That just simply means it. First topic of today is develop a collaborative agenda. See, when I was giving you that story at the beginning of, of, of the episode, I was explaining what I thought that I saw, but I didn't see what I saw. Okay, maybe you don't understand what I mean by that, family. You see, what I thought I saw was a project manager. I was modeling with that project manager what I thought they did. But see, what I wasn't aware of is that they had a collaborative approach to the agenda. So what they did was they already knew kind of who the stakeholders were because on, on their project charter, it was identified. So he went to those resources and said, who else do we need to get to be part of this project? You know, identify your stakeholders. And then he went and met with them in a group setting or those particular departments and say, hey, I'm getting ready to do a kickoff meeting. And because I'm getting ready to do a kickoff meeting, I want this to be a collaborative kickoff meeting. I don't want it to be, I get on the call and I'm dictative. I'm basically me saying, hey, this, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. I want to more or less be able to get you engaged into the agenda and really to establish a foundation, which that foundation is the actual expectations. What can you expect on this project and what are you expecting on this project and how you're going to be able to collaborate? So that's why I said point number one, family, if you don't know any of the rest of the points that I deliver today, this is a major one. This is a game changer. Anytime that I have a, 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 a amazing kickoff, uh, or I should say leading a project and I take this approach. And again, you have to have stakeholders that are willing because you will have stakeholders that's like, hey, they won't even answer you. They'll say, no, nah, I'm good. I'll just wait to the kickoff meeting and give feedback. But when you have those exceptional, mm, those exceptional uh, project, I should say exceptional stakeholders, they're going to want to collaborate because they know the success that they have on the project, the easier it is going to be for them to do other things. Because again, as we know, a project is a what? A temporary endeavor. So what is being a temporary endeavor? This is not the only thing that they're working on. So the more success that we have, the way the better that we're able to establish a protocol or as I'll say, establish uh, expectations across the board is really good. So we want to include on that on that agenda. We want to ensure that we took a collaborative approach and in including our objective. What are we looking to accomplish? 
our scope, our roles, our timelines, and then saving enough time for Q&A. And I'm also going to disrupt this too. So stay tuned for point number two. Before I go into point number two, I really want to tell you, thank you for watching today's episode. Make sure you hit the, uh, the like button. And if, I, you know, I, I see you guys out here watching, but you haven't subscribed, show me some love. I mean, it, it don't hurt you just to hit that subscribe button. I won't tell nobody if you won't. Uh, for if you, if you really enjoy today's content and other content, please, again, subscribe to the, the channel. Uh, so you can get more project management and personal development thoughts. I have a newsletter. It's also in the the link. Uh, I have the link within uh, the channel. I may pin it to the uh, comments as well. And also, if you have fellow project managers or you're looking to get in project management, you know, send this over to other project managers and let them know what we're doing over here and that you're you're, you're supporting us by hitting that like and subscribe button. Let's get on to point number two. Point number two: have a balanced agenda with structure, but be flexible. I, that's going to scare a lot of project managers. I know. I told you this is what top project managers do. So you have to understand that a lot of times as a project manager, you can get in a control manner. Okay. You don't like that word. That's probably too aggressive. Well, you can get into what I should say is a organization, organizational mindset. A organizational mindset is like, okay, we got to do A, then we go to point B and then we go to C. And if anything disrupts that, then, Hey, nope, we're not talking about, we're not doing that. Now I I will admit, and I want to say this, I really want to say this because I know people will take this too far, is that we have to have what we call parking lots. What's a parking lot? See, when I was growing up, we used to do this thing where we would, uh, we couldn't make it inside the club, so we would just sit out in the parking lot. See, in the parking lot, what we would do is just hang out and talk to other people who was just like us that didn't make it in the actual club or the actual event. And at that time, I have to be honest, I had more fun in the parking lot than I did in the actual event. So what I'm saying to you, family, is that in the parking lot, these are the things that we, as a project manager, you want to document and put those there. And then if we have time to get to them. Now, here's the contradiction. And I know, again, that's why I said I, here, here it comes. The contradiction is, though, you still need to be flexible as a project manager. As you're leading it, you have to make an informed decision hey, is this applicable to the conversation? It wasn't on the agenda. It wasn't something I was thinking of covering, but that stakeholder may just have a really excellent point there. And if they have an excellent point there, I think we need to go ahead and include this and it may disrupt the agenda, but isn't the, isn't the goal, or I should say the outcome of the project is to what? Meet the triple constraints. What is meeting the triple constraint? Uh, triple constraint? Meaning either being on budget or even saving money, uh, your schedule, also your, uh, I said your schedule, your schedule, your cost, your quality, as well as uh, your scope. Being able to meet all of these in a measurable, measurable aspect is what our outcome is. And then having a six, basically having a successful uh, outcome of the project. So family, don't be, um, I don't want to use the word afraid, but don't get, don't, don't get intimidated by if a stakeholder does disrupt your agenda because what you can do with that is use that to your advantage because you may need to bring that particular point in. All right, let's move on to point number three, limit meeting dur uh, duration. I still struggle with this family. I mean, when I tell you I struggle, struggle with this is because sometimes you can really start having a really uh, amazing conversation on an agenda topic and you may not get to the remaining of your agenda. So what I've learned to do and I'm still learning uh, is basically say, all right, well, let's set, the, let's set this up in phase. So if we're only able to cover, uh, cover a topic one and two, then I know for the next call or the next uh, opportunity when we meet, let's cover the, ne the remaining items and do more of a phased approach to the actual rollout. Plus, this is really good, too, because you're keeping the kick uh, the kickoff in front of the your stakeholders, because a lot of times what happen is, is when you kick when you have a project kickoff, it may be a couple days or even sometimes weeks before you have another major meeting with the important stakeholders that are going to be contributing to that project. So having more of a phase kickoff is, I think, again, in my in the subjective, 
I've seen really uh, amazing success in that. So being able to really, in, when you're in this phase, you want to be able to limit your, your, your time from 30 to maybe 30 to 60 minutes when you're actually meeting because people will get what I call meeting for, uh, fatigue. Having the ability, to, all of a sudden you start seeing people pulling out their phone or all of a sudden they got to they gotta go to another meeting. So being able to be concise in those meetings and within 30 minutes. Point number four, encur encourage open dialogue and questions. Listen, the ability to allocate time for Q&A and encourage participate, participants, uh, as I should say, stakeholders to voice their opinions and foster a culture, a culture of open communication. If you know, if you haven't learned by now, I'm always pushing uh, collaboration. I'm always pushing, let's have a open conversation. I'm always pushing, hey, let's have a safe area to have that open communication. Because when you're able to do that and be transparent, family, what it tend to happen is, is that you'll be able to get more out of the project. Everyone will have an opportunity to give their feedback at the same time you, you're able to, you know, because at the end of the day, it's about the outcome of the project of having a success. Let's move on to point number five. Point number five is you Use visual aids and tools. One of the things that I, I, I enjoy doing, and it depends on you know the, the, the work environment. Now, Zoom has a really amazing tool uh, with polls, so leveraging polls, because you want to be able to keep your audience, your stakeholders engaged while you're delivering uh, delivering on the uh, PowerPoint slides, which is the other piece of this. So having some type of slides, having some type of visual to guide your to, to, to guide the stakeholders of where you're at and where you plan on going, and then also maybe even t going even digging deeper, maybe even having a brainstorming session right there on the kickoff call if possible. And again. Remember, I talked about having different phase approaches. Now, a lot you're not going to hear a lot of different, a uh, lot of project managers talk about having phase kickoff meetings. Normally, it's a kickoff meeting. They try to get as much as they can in in 30 to 60 minutes, and sometimes it's even longer than that. And then you just burnt out or you wore down your team instead of taking, like I said, more of a, fra a phased approach. Let's move on to point number six: cultivate a positive meeting culture. I love this. Promote a positive view, family, of meetings and opportunity. Hey, you know what? Tell people thank you for showing up because they don't have to be there. Yes, I know they're required to be there, but they don't have to be there. When I say they don't have to be there, they don't have to pay attention. They can just actually just be there and just really not care about what's going on and just like, okay, when is my, what do I, what I have to work on? What are my tasks? What is the next thing for me? But when you create, when you promote a collaborative uh, approach to uh, having these meetings, you will be shocked and surprised because now your participation goes from being passive to active. Let's move on to point number seven. Clearly define roles and responsibilities. Can you say create a racy? What is a racy, ED? Responsibility, accountability, consult, and inform. This is what we call a, a, a racy matrix. How this works is basically you want to take your uh, your team to uh, through this. How how this helps? It allows people to know what they're responsible for, what they're accountable for, what they need to be consulted on, and what they need to be informed on. So there's so now is as, as as like I said, my grandma would say, it's clear as mud, baby. So let's move on to point number eight. Point number eight. Early stakeholder engagement. I talked about this early about at the that's the second point. I think it was the first or second point when I discussed uh, creating a collaborative agenda. I think it was the very first point creating a collaborative agenda. See, it's important to create a collaborative agenda. But but in order to do that, you may want to reach out to your stakeholders early and just have a high level brief project overview and ask for their inputs and concerns. I don't know about you, but anytime that I felt part of something, someone asked for my opinion and then took my opinion and my feedback and done something with it constructively, they may not use everything, but they may have used bits and pieces which made me feel more part of the project. They made me feel more part of the team. And so look at leveraging those type of things. Family, you know I can't leave you without leaving you uh, with a bonus and some closing remarks. First of all, my, my, my bonus that I have for you today, regular check-ins and feedbacks. Listen, after you have that kickoff meeting, if you don't have another uh, meeting again for another week or two, make sure that you are sending out some type of communication, some type of uh, connection, just to let the teams know that your stakeholders know that, hey, we are still here and we're still working through some things. 
on the back end, but we want to keep you engaged and let you know where we're at and what is the roadmap of us moving forward. So this, this allows them to know, hey, so when we do reach out, when we say, hey, it's go time, then you know it's go time. Listen, family, I have three closing remarks for you. First point, as I talked about, develop a collaborative agenda. Point being is being able to engage your stakeholders um, early in helping you build that particular agenda so they can feel more engaged and be a, watch this family, an active participant versus a passive. Point number two, being able to, uh, again, use early stakeholder engagement. Early stakeholder engagement, I know it kind of ties into point number one, but the point I am trying to make is the earlier, the better. Point number three, establish clear communication styles. I'll talk about it in the book back behind me, family, The Magnetic Project Manager. If you haven't, go pick that up. We're in Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, your local, uh, hopefully soon in your local uh, bookstores. But what, we're, what I'm saying there is communication is has to be key so you need to identify what those communication channels are for your your stakeholders that's going to work so again family i hope you enjoyed today's episode i go by the name of ed until next time you know my slogan i'm out